Whether it was hosting the seminal program Wide World of Sports or covering the Kentucky Derby, Indy 500, or other premier sporting events, Jim McKay was a quintessential face of ABC Sports for nearly four decades. But it was his reporting on the Munich Massacre at the 1972 Summer Olympics that propelled his career and earned him Emmy Awards for both sports and news reporting. When Germany had last hosted the Olympics in 1936, Hitler used the games to demonstrate his military might. 36 years later, Germany wanted the Munich Games to appear peaceful and carefree and intentionally limited the security presence. On the morning of September 5th, 10 days into the competition, members of the Palestinian terrorist group Black September broke into the Olympic Village and attacked the Israeli team, killing two and taking nine others hostage. They demanded the release of more than 200 prisoners held in Israel. You've shared that your dad got a call when he was swimming in the Sheraton pool. What, what transpired? Well, it was the one day he didn't have an assignment for ABC Sports, the Olympics, because he did track and field and gymnastics, and there was a day off between gymnastics and track and field. So he and my mom were going to go to Salzburg and have a nice lunch outside looking at the Alps. And he was down at the pool and got a message to please get into the studio as soon as possible. My dad ran up from the pool, uh, put on his slacks and his shirt and his blazer, and ran off to the studio. And it wasn't until later that night when he finally got home after all these hours in the studio that he realized he still had his bathing suit on. And that sort of symbolized and crystallized for him what a bizarre and strange day it had been. Most people, um, at least our age, remember that Chris Schenkel was the official mm -hmm. host of the games. Peter Jennings was the Mideast correspondent. Mm -hmm. And so they had all kinds of people there. Why do you think Rune Arlett chose your father? You know, I think he followed his instincts and knew that my father had a background in journalism and print reporting. And that first and foremost, he didn't consider himself a sports broadcaster. He considered himself a reporter. Order. And I'm not sure he had decided that my father was going to stay in the chair for all those hours. But once he got in there, Rune realized that this was the, the man to take us through this terrible day. Good afternoon. I'm Jim McKay speaking to you live at this moment from ABC headquarters just outside the Olympic Village in Munich, West Germany. The peace of what is what have been called the Serene Olympics was shattered just before dawn this morning about 5 o'clock when... Arab terrorists armed with submachine guns, faces blackened, a couple of them disguised as guards or as uh, trash men in the Olympic Village, climbed the fence, went to the headquarters of the Israeli team, and immediately killed one man, Moshe Weinberg, a coach, two shots in the head, one in the stomach. I called my mom and she said, your dad's in the studio. So I thought, I'll go in the studio also. You know, I knew everybody in the control room, you know, walked in and was briefed on what was going on and then spent the rest of the day and the early morning hours, you know, with my dad, most of the time in a corner of the studio right behind the main camera. I saw him get more and more drained by what was going on. Um, I saw sadness in his eyes as it was going on. But to be there with him for that entire time was just a life-altering experience. This is building number 31. And we're moving in now on the windows behind which, at this moment, eight or nine terrified living human beings are being held prisoner. You were 17 years old. For a teenager, what were you thinking? It was surreal because terrorism was not part of our daily lives back in 1972. So to see it, it was almost hard to believe it was actually happening. And to see my father, you know, on that relatively small set in the ABC compound, it was hard to imagine that all of America the world. Uh, was in the world were tuned in to watching him. It was almost like being in a movie or a dream where nothing seemed real. And it was so awful what was happening that it was stunning and it was numbing in, in many ways. For you, did you have any mixture of pride and anxiety and fear for him? 
all those things. You know, I was concerned that as the day went on, can he hold up under this pressure? It was really emotionally and physically draining. He's often talked about the fact that there was a young weightlifter whose family lived in Shaker Heights. And throughout the day, my father knew the Berger family were going to hear from him whether or not their son was alive. To be able to take you know, that kind of pressure and that kind of emotion and remain um, you know, as he did is remarkable. The crisis unfolded into the early hours of September 6th. The terrorists were transported with their hostages to a nearby airbase where they planned to fly back to the Middle East. That's when a botched rescue attempt by an ill-equipped German police force led to the chaotic and tragic conclusion. I've just gotten the final word. You know, when I was a kid, my father used to say, our greatest hopes and our worst fears are mm. seldom realized. Our worst fears have been realized tonight. They've now said that there were 11 hostages. Two were killed in their rooms this mo yesterday morning. Nine were killed at the airport tonight. They're all gone. As my dad said, you know, our worst fears were, were realized. Um, I think everybody was so emotionally drained. There were definitely tears from, you know, men and women who weren't used to covering a news story. They were used to covering sports. And even um, the way he delivered it, it was just, you know, it was like, um, I'm, I'm broken, but I yeah, have to do I this. Have to have, the way he said that and the way he just summed, summed it up uh, was so sad yet so poignant that he was able to come up with those words. And I remember riding back to the hotel in the wee hours of the morning with him. We didn't say a word to each other. I think we were drained. We went to the front desk of the hotel for him to get his key. And the um, receptionist said, you have a telegram here, uh, Mr. McKay. And it was from Walter Cronkite. And I'm paraphrasing, but it said, Jim, you did yourself and your profession incredibly proud today. Sincerely, Walter Cronkite. And my dad looked at me and said, you know, this is a moment that we will both remember for the rest of our lives. And my father had no idea of the impact he was having or how many people were watching. But getting that letter from someone who was an old friend of his and someone whom my father idolized just put a punctuation point on that day that I'll never forget. And he carried that telegram in his briefcase until the day he died.